Hello beautiful souls. This video is for anyone out there who is frustrated with or confused about finding your purpose, seeking your purpose, expressing your purpose, or anything related to purpose. So before we go any further, let's just do a quick energy exercise to assist with this. And uh, then I'm going to explain some ideas about purpose that could help you get a breakthrough around this. So if you would just put your hand on your heart, right? Just your fingers on your heart chakra and then put your awareness right in the middle of your chest, right in the middle of your heart. And then imagine that you've got a hand or a finger on the inside from the center of your heart chakra, reaching out to touch the fingers on the outside. Just sit with that for a bit and after a while, you'll feel your heart chakra opening. Okay, so just feel into that energy, that heart energy. And I want to tell you a story. And this is about my mother. When she was five or six, she was signed up by her mother for her first piano lesson. And, you know, she got to that lesson and it was like magic right? Um, and from that day on, you could not pry her away from the keyboard. Now, she recently turned 81. And in the whole lifespan, you know, that was her thing. That was her thing. She was always at the piano. She uh, went to school and became a, a concert pianist. And she was a teacher. And she um, founded a, a piano teacher's group in, in, in our local area here. And that was what she was known for. You think Nancy Royce, you think piano, right? And so to a lot of us, I think that that is kind of like the, the model for, you know, somebody who knows their purpose. And, and it's something that I think we have in the back of our, mind, of our minds a lot. It's like, why can't I find my thing? <laughs> right? Um, but I want to tell you a little secret about my mother, and I think this may be true for for many people like her, right? Um, is that the, she struggled with it because it was so all-consuming. And when you have a purpose like that or something that really calls to you, a calling, I think is a better word for it, you have to kind of learn to balance. And some people just choose and that's all they do, right? Other people, for her... She had to make some sacrifices, right? She actually stayed home with myself and my brother, and it was the greatest gift I think she could have given me was being there for us when we were little. I mean, I can remember when I was tiny, tiny, listening to her practicing at night after I'd been put to bed and these beautiful melodies of Chopin and, and Beethoven and Schubert and all the greats, right? And and so like even though she in her own mind wasn't practicing her her big calling you know by by being a big concert pianist somewhere yet it it really you know i think she's really impacted the lives of everyone uh, whose life she has touched and um so that's that's one way right and as a visual artist myself i like to think of one's purpose as a work of art, right? And there's there's several ways you can do it. And there's several ways you can approach a painting, right? If, you, if you're standing in front of the easel and you have a canvas in front of you, one way is to have the concept of the painting full blown in your mind and you just break out your paints and you do it, right? You paint the painting and there it is. And, and that's beautiful when it happens, right? And somebody like my mother, uh, she approached life like that. She, she was able to just kind of know what her heart was calling her to do and, and do it. But we're not all like that. So if you are, have been struggling with this, know that that's not the only way. And it's also really easy to get confused between purpose and your, your calling in life. Um, but it, coming back to the art analogy, another way to approach creating a painting is just to, to throw a bunch of paint on the canvas. Just slap it on and, and have fun with it and play and see what comes out of it. And after you've got some paint on there and you've been playing around with it for a while, just stop. And you can take a look and you may 
see something in there. Oh, that looks like that looks like a daffodil <laughs> or that looks like a horse's head or something like that. And then you can begin to draw out from that image and, and start to shift it and create around that little image that's forming and see what happens. OK, and so there's other people who approach life more like that. And and it's really easy when if you're watching somebody do this, you know, maybe watching yourself to think, well, they're, they're, they're not doing anything. They're just kind of finger painting and they're just playing around. Um, if you're not really feeling into the, the, the vibration of it, it, it can look like a waste, right? Or it can look like this is going nowhere. And I have to tell you, sometimes when you're painting like that, sometimes it does go nowhere. Sometimes you reach a dead end. You're like, this really isn't working. And sometimes you got to just take and paint right over it, a whole new layer right over it. And sometimes you have to do that multiple times, right? But in the end, if you keep in your heart, right, the, the downfall of any piece of art is when you start getting in your head, right, and thinking about it and thinking, oh, no, that was wrong, this was wrong and this isn't working and this it, it just isn't the way i had conceptualized it and when we start stepping out of the heart and out of that beautiful play space of the heart and into this judgmental kind of mindset or worry right oh my gosh what if it doesn't turn out what if what if what if what if i can't you know, find it, or if I can only find the right place, if only I can find the right person to be with, if only I can find the right thing to do, then things will work out and I'll be, you know, have found my purpose. Well, <laughs> consider one more, one more possibility you know, as you're standing before this canvas of your life. And that is maybe Maybe you're not creating a two-dimensional image. Maybe what you're doing is multi-dimensional, okay? And so I, I have a friend, um, and I'll just call her Miranda for now, okay? And I, I stopped in yesterday to pick something up from her house, and we had a long conversation. And um, she'd, <laughs> she'd recently worked with me and with another practitioner about finding her purpose, but she was still in this kind of stuck place, right? Like, you know, I, I just don't know what I'm supposed to do. And I was like, well, come into your heart. And she's like, I know, I've been trying to follow my heart, and it's just not leading. I don't know. And so something just told me, like this little download was like, well, consider, consider this. What if, what if you're already in your purpose? What if you're already doing what you're here to do? What if you're already there? What if, what if you're already there? And so I think one thing that we tend to overlook or not see sometimes is that we exist in more than just this, you know, life that we're witnessing and, and living, that we are multidimensional beings, right? So that we have this 3D life that we're living, but there's other dimensions of who you are that exist, that are here, and that you are, you know, this life is communicating with these other dimensions. And when I felt into Miranda, right, when I felt into her field and really started feeling into what was happening with her, it was like, you know what, you're already there. You're already there. You've got all these other dimensions. <laughs> all these other dimensions and as you go along your life here they're out there doing this incredible energy work it's incredible energy work and this is this is the kind of person just so you know when Miranda walks in a room I've seen it happen I've seen her walk into the room and the room lights up it's like she's got this light and I, I've known other souls like this that they have an energy that they carry with them, they have a presence. And I call these anchor souls, right? And because they are just anchoring a certain energy, a certain frequency into the world. And so there's the ego mind that wants to equate 
what we're doing with our reason for being, with our purpose, okay? And the ego wants to see us doing something great, something magnificent, something that makes an impact, right? And when the ego doesn't see us doing that, when we're just living an ordinary life, and maybe a life that we don't even see what the purpose is. It's just like we have a job and, 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 and we're alive, right? What the ego doesn't see, because the ego is incapable of seeing, is the whole aura and the energy and the frequency, the vibration that you have. And how impactful that really is. And it doesn't matter if you seem to be making an impact, right? If you are in that heart space and you've activated the heart and you've activated the vibration of yourself, right? Through the heart, you are having the most incredible impact that you can imagine. And <laughs> like this friend of mine, she cleans houses for a living. Right. And so I asked her about that and she said, yeah, when I'm and because she was talking about some of her clients and she's got elderly clients and and she kind of mentioned that, you know, somebody was like, oh, when Miranda's been here, it's just feels so much better. Right. And and Miranda hangs out with a bunch of energy workers. <laughs> and I was like, oh, OK, well, you are an energy worker. And, and she's like, what? <laughs> I just hang out with you guys because because I like your energy and I'm like no you're an energy worker if you were just hanging out because you liked our energy and you weren't an energy worker yourself it would be just draining us right that doesn't happen you're an energy worker and what's happening is like the higher dimensions of you are doing massive energy work and when you're doing your cleaning work she's because she told me when I'm when I'm cleaning a house I'm just in the flow I just get in the flow and it just the time passes I'm like exactly right exactly because think about you know what she's actually doing cleaning a house it's clearing work she's clearing the space she's, <laughs> it's amazing energy work but she's got higher dimensions of herself that are that are taking this and going back and forth and and she doesn't even know it right and this is the same for all of us whatever it is that we're called to do when we're called to do something that feels right Right? Even if it's washing the dishes, even if it's pumping gas, I got to pump gas right now and this, this is the right thing to do right now, right? Um, whatever it is, there is aspects of ourselves that we aren't even aware of that are at work, right? The only thing that can get in the way of that is that little mind saying, this isn't important. This isn't important to do. You know, why are you, why are you making a pie right now? You should be doing something else, right? You should be doing something more important. You know, you should be doing something more important. When that little voice comes in, it's like, this isn't enough. This isn't enough. This isn't enough. We pay attention. And when you notice that, that's the time. Put your hand on your heart and invite your heart chakra to open and just breathe and let your... You know, just let yourself know. Let your ego know we've got this. My higher self has got this. You know, sometimes, you know, we have, we have a life where we got to throw a lot of paint on the canvas. And sometimes our real purpose doesn't show up. We don't become really aware of why am I here and, and, and what do I need to do next in order to really stay in that purpose-led Place. Sometimes we don't really have a concept of what it's all about until we've matured. Maybe we've had to develop certain skills. Maybe we've had to learn certain lessons. And a lot of these things that seem like dead ends, they're not. They've given us the lessons. They've given us the skills that we need to move forward. But none of us, and including the ones that, that know what their calling is right from, from day one, None of us is really going to fully ex express our purpose until we have that, that vibration, until we come into our hearts. Because it's from the heart space that it all blossoms forward. And even if you're doing your calling, what you're here to do, your healing work, your art, your whatever it is, you know, maybe you're a farmer, whatever it is, right? If you're doing that work 
and you're not in that heart space and your mind's off here somewhere else or your mind's off here saying, I'm not in Carnegie Hall, I'm not doing it well enough, right? Or I don't have umpteen million clients, I'm not doing it well enough, right? If that little voice, if you allow that to start distracting you, you're not going to be allowing yourself to express your purpose in a way that's going to be most fully benefiting the world at large. Because make no mistake, everything that you do from that heart space is healing. It's healing the world, right? So sending all my love, all my love to you, wishing for you the most beautiful, peaceful, joy-filled day. And remember, you were born to be free.